as we go this morning and we take this time to take our communion this morning we're going to go into the scriptures first Corinthians chapter 11 again as we do this amen the word of God rem reminds us we do it as unto him amen we don't do this habitually or religiously amen but we do this in remembrance the love of our God amen giving his only begotten son for you and I Amen. And in the scriptures in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, it says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. Amen. You can join in with me. Let's read it. Amen. Together. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take ye. This is my body. Which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Let a man examine himself. So let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Amen. For he that eat it and drink it unworthily, eat it and drink it damnation to himself not discerning the Lord's body. Amen. So as we take and we do this in remembrance of our Lord and Savior, the, the Word of God reminds us to examine our hearts. Amen. Examine ourselves as we receive the cup and the body. Amen. This morning. So Father God, Lord, we thank you, Lord. Father, Lord, forgive us where we've missed it, Lord, where we've come short. Father, Lord, cleanse our hearts, our thoughts, our ways, our actions, Father, Lord, from all unrighteousness that we may be found, as your word reminds us, holy and acceptable, in right standings before and unto you. Father, God, Lord, we receive the cup, Father, Lord, as well as the body this morning, knowing and acknowledging you, Father, God, Lord. The word of God reminds us we acknowledge you, Father, Lord. And we remember your love for each and every one of us. We thank you, thank you, thank you, Father God, Lord. We bless it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let's take the body and eat, amen. Father God, Lord, we thank you, we love you, and honor you. Hallelujah. For great and greatly to be praised are you. Bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's all come in agreement and say, Amen. Hallelujah. You know, today I'm, I'm so blessed. Uh, I've been going through some stuff that you probably go through too as well, I'm sure. Everybody goes through some ups, some downs, some happy, some sad. Sometimes you just don't want to show up at work. You don't want to show up at any place. But you just want to just lie down and do what Bruno Mars said. Today, I don't feel like doing anything. And then everybody go. <laughs> Sometimes you feel like that. And I, and I want to share this message today. It's talking about this word called joy. Can you say it with me? Say joy. Come on, say it with me. Say joy. J-O-Y, joy. You know that joy is something special. It's, a, it's actually a, a fruit. It's actually a gift, and it's actually a blessing to keep this word called what? Joy. joy. And speaking about this, I'm going to give you a little appetizer. Speaking about the word joy, 
it has a whole lot with what life is all about. If you lose the word joy in your life or you allow the, the devil or the enemy to steal or rob joy out of your life, you're not going to enjoy anything. And this morning I'm filled with joy, not just to just see my family, but just to know that God had given me a new day. It's a new beginning. It's a fresh start. And joy coming where? In the morning. In the morning. Guess what? If you don't know by now, it's still morning time, baby. It's still morning time. Sunday morning. And in the morning time on the Sunday, we're worshiping together. We're singing together. Back at home, I'm sure we would have been dancing together. We would have been singing a song, Let the Praise Begin. I should have remembered Kuna was going to be. I would have bought my whole drum set from home. But I think you probably wouldn't be able to hear after the drum starts banging in this small room here. So it's such a blessing. I was so happy. Back home, that was my ministry. It was um, before just being ordained as a, a, a regular pastor. I was a worship pastor, if you don't know that by now. I was a worship pastor. I love singing. It's part of who I am. Part of our life in the, in the islands. Come on, you islanders. Part of our life in the islands is singing. I mean, you can go to the beach. But guess where you're going to find somebody with some part of the family? Under the mango tree. Or under the coconut tree with their ukulele and their guitar doing what? Singing. It's part of our culture, part of our life. And it's all to connect with the word called what? Joy. It says this in John chapter 15. If you got your Bibles, you can open up John uh, chapter 15. I'm going to read from the Gospel of John. And um, if you don't got your Bibles, it's okay. My lovely daughter, Jaira, is going to help to shoot the words up on the screen over here too. So the, the scriptures. But I'm reading from the New King James Version. Chapter 15, I'm going to read from verse 5 to 11. It says this. He says that Jesus said this. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides, abides in me. And I in him bears what? Much fruit. Somebody say much fruit. And it says, for without me, you can do what? Nothing. Verse 6 says, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire to make barbecue. No, it didn't say that. And they are burned. Seven says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire. Anybody got some desires? Anybody got some desires? Only thing you've been praying for and asking God to be a, open up the door for you. Come on now. Anybody got some desires? Have you got some desires? You got an opportunity because there's some keys being released right now. If you abide in him and he in us, then whatever you ask, isn't it right there? It says about it. Whatever you ask, when you abide in him, it says this, and it shall be done for you. It shall be done. Somebody say it with me. It shall be done. And then it says this in 8. It says, by this my father is glorified, that you bear much fruit. There's the word again, fruit. Somebody say much fruit. So you will be my disciples. Nine says, that as the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. Ten says, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. And the last scripture I'm going to read is 11 says, these things I have spoken to you, that my, these things I have spoken to you, that my, my joy may remain in you. Anybody need some joy to stay? Hang around. Stick out. Stick around. Stuck on me. There's a song called Stuck on You. I want joy to be stuck on me. Anybody need some joy to be stuck on them every day? Because I tell you something, you're going to go to your workplaces, you're going to go to your ways out throughout the week, and you're going to get people cussing at you, you're going to get people next door in their cars blasting their horn, telling you you're number one. <laughs> You number one, get out the way, you number one guy. What you do, you roll out your window, do you tell them what? Well, back home, you probably tell them what? Over here, you tell them what? They go, what you said? <laughs> so when they tell you you number one up here, what you tell them? <laughs> you number two, brother, you number two, man. So you're going to have some pressures, but you got to keep this word called what? Come on, you got to keep this word called what? That these things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy, that my joy, this is a huge one, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be what? 
If his joy remains in us, then our joy can remain what? Full. If God's joy remains in us, then what? Our joy can remain. But if he does not remain in us or we're not abiding in him, can our joy remain full? Take a look at that big right spot over there with the, bent, the big bent on the side. <laughs> but the rice still cook. Do you think we would use a rice spot that size for five people? Maybe for a whole week. But the rice ain't going to last. But a big rice spot like that, you're expecting to feed what? A lot of people. If you need joy in your life, do you know that it takes some challenge, it takes some things to go through to remember that if you lose the joy, you lose peace, you lose uh, patience, you lose kindness. And when you lose joy, the enemy's going to see you what? Sweat. He's going to see you sweat. And when he sees you sweat, how many of you agree? If he sees you sweating, he's going to want to keep on bugging you and messing with you and keep on poking you in your side and say, I know I got you, you hothead bugger. But if he don't see you sweat, what is he thinking? Shoot, I don't know what else to do. I throw all these kind of accusations at him. I throw little speed bumps. I put keys on the football field. <laughs> he slipped on the football field because of my coach's keys. He puts little things on there. But it doesn't matter the situation, the speed bump, the stuff that you face. Not all storms come to bring devastation or disaster. God allows sometimes the storms to come to clear your path that you could see a lot clearer. Anybody agree that God is good? If you agree he's good, say so this morning. Say he's good. I want to leave a message, this, a message theme this morning. Jaira, if you can shoot that message team up. The message team, it talks about joy. It says what, Jaira? It says this, maintaining the joy of the Lord. You know, maintaining the joy of the Lord. Joy is not just something that just comes in the morning, something that just hangs in the day. Joy is something that you got to do some maintenance. What is maintenance? Before I was ever doing anything with training here in the building, I was the maintenance person. I was yours truly pumping the toilets, taking out the trash. I was your, come on, I know we got some GCSA students in here who saw me taking out trash. If you did, raise your hands. At least, some, at least those two, you two, you guys lie. <laughs> but there's some students in here that is part of GCSA and they saw me taking out the trash. But when they saw me taking out the trash, after they laid all the mess in here, this is our cafeteria on the daytime. And when they saw me, putting away the tables, cleaning up all their mess. They probably look and say, how would he want to do what he's doing? If I lost joy, I would have not walked back in this building again. But because I kept joy, it didn't matter how much times I took out the trash. It didn't matter how much times I put away the tables, the chairs, or swept up their mess. I kept joy inside of me. There's some things you're going to face in life that's going to be hard for you to sweep out the door. The mess people put in your ears, the things they say about you, it's hard to sweep it out your ears at times and to get rid of it. But somebody got to take out the trash once in a while. And you'll be hearing trash, seeing trash. But if you let the trash bother you, you're never going to clean up your mess or the other people's mess or help other people to clean up the mess that they're in. You can never be a blessing to somebody until you first take care of what you got in your life. Does that make sense? Maintaining the joy. What is maintaining? You go to the gym to try and maintain a good health. You walk on the treadmill to try and bring maintenance because if I can start walking maybe quarter of a mile, maybe one day I make a mile. But it takes the first step to start moving forward. You know in life that's all about trying to push yourself out of the, the gear called neutral. Because some of us today is in a gear called neutral. And if you drive a standard vehicle, if you're in neutral, someone can push you from the front Someone can push you from the back, and wherever they push you is where you're going to end up. But it's hard to get out of neutral because we're so used to having people telling us what to do, how to do it, this is what you do. But God gave you a mouth, he gave you a mind, he gave you the will, he gave you a strength to stand. And he says, greater is he that is in me than who's in the world. We live in this world, but we don't have to be partakers of the world. Does that make sense? We live in this world full of a lot of different temptations here in Salvation City. I don't want to say the other name that used to be. Here in Salvation City, there's a lot of temptation. 
This is probably where the, the temptations were started way back. It wasn't maybe in Nashville. It was probably right here in Las Vegas. Because then you would be filled with a lot of what? Temptation. They even got a show on reality TV called what? Temptation Island. They take couples and see if they would actually fall into giving up. You know, you know today, you're going to be tempted by the enemy. You're going to be tempted by the things you see. Some of our marriages at the times be tempted by the things that we see. And you might see a cutie walk past and the cutie might say, yoo -hoo. And then next thing you know, your whole attention is off of the one that you really love. But we all make mistakes. <laughs> only Pastor Jay is the only one to make mistakes. <laughs> yoo -hoo. I make mistakes. I'm human just as much as you're human. But I got to remember to keep this thing called joy. And I want to leave three keys with you about maintaining joy. Can we leave these three keys today about maintaining joy? Because joy comes in the morning, but not just it comes in the morning. I think it's a good reminder that joy comes in the morning because it says in the scripture, it says, weeping may endure for a night. Storms may endure for a moment. Challenges may endure for seasons. You're in a season right now. We're in a transition season in the four seasons that we live in. You know, back in Hawaii, it's one season all year long. It's 80 degrees, pretty much almost all year, 80 degrees. But when I moved out of the islands, my wife and I had to put away our, well, I'll take the credit for it. I bought the plastic bags that you vacuum seal the winter clothes. But my wife puts our winter clothes in these big bags. And God bless me with a great, amazing woman to downsize my closet because of all her clothes. <laughs> and she puts them all in these big plastic bags and she puts the vacuum on them and it just, I wish she could do it to me too. Just put me in a plastic bag. <laughs> I just look so maintained in five seconds. But she puts all our winter clothes away, vacuum, seals it, and everything just, and then she can stack it in, the, in our closet. We think my closet is really her closet. But here in the, in the States, we got to work with things called seasons. And you're in a transition season called fall. And it's about to happen to come where it's in the winter time. Back at home, if it's in the 60 degrees, we don't go work. <laughs> you guys laughing because you got the first one calling well. But how often does it get into the 60s? Very rare. So if it's very rare, it's 60s. You know, over here, 60s. Oh, that feels so good. Back at home in Hawaii, we act like we're freezing in the damn North Pole. <laughs> but you're going through a season. Literally, uh, in a physical, we're going through a season. And in season, things are going to change. But we got to be able to adjust. You got to adapt right there, Kanoi. You got to adapt because if you don't adapt, you're going to easily get bent out of shape. And if you get bent out of shape, you're going to lose what the word is what? Joy. But even when things happen around you that you least expected it to happen, and things aren't working like how you want it to work right now, you still can actually keep this word called joy. You see, I watched this movie with um, um, the Pursuit of Happiness. Uh, forget the, the actor's name. Will Smith. I love that movie, Pursuit of Happiness. I love that movie. I really did because it inspired me a lot about persevering and keep moving forward. Never gave up hope. He was a creative person, was blessed. He was very smart. But it came a time where it was tough and he and his son was in a, in a restroom. It was in a bathroom and we locked himself in. Anybody ever saw The Pursuit of Happiness? You know, when you're pursuing anything, it's going to go through some seasons, it's going to go through some tough stuff, things that we're blessed with, that it just show up at our doorstep. You go through seasons of challenge, but you got to do the word. What that movie talked about is pursue. You got to keep moving forward. I love when I used to play at the University of Hawaii. And one thing I remember, I had this coach. He was a defensive coordinator. His name was Coach Don. He said, you remember this, young man? The offense is going to want to use this word called yak. And I said, yak? All I know about yak is yak that he yak, don't talk back. But yak was yards after contact. 
And I saw this happen yesterday in the game that I watched the 12U boys play because the refs didn't blow the whistle. And they didn't blow the whistle because they said the runner was still moving in a forward advancement. So I said, how much longer are you going to hold up the whistle and somebody gets hurt? I said, if they're still leaning and moving forward, we're not going to blow the whistle. The word yak, yards after contact. And my defense coordinator said, the offense is going to want to do this. After you contact them, they're going to want to still make yards after you contact them. But how it stops it all from happening is you got to get them to a vulnerable position, meaning they can't lean forward. So I said, how do you stop a person from leaning forward? You got to get them to the knees right away. So we learned different type of tackling. We call gator rolls and we call this tackling just trying to get them on their knees as soon as possible. We'll get them to touch the ground, their elbows, their knees, get these points of contact to touch the ground because once these areas touch the ground, the way the ref got to blow the whistle. You stop the yards after contact, the faster you get them on their knees. You know, literally, spiritually, you, you stop all the assaults and the assignments and the acquisitions, the faster you get yourself on your knees. Ooh. It's yards after contact. The devil's been contacting you all the day long, all week long. You've been hearing things, going through things, doctors say this and that and that, and they've been hitting you and contacting you all the day long. But it's until you realize that you got to get yourself on your knees. Yeah. And when you get yourself on your knees, guess what? The assault stops. The whistle blows. And when the whistle blows, you're like, ah, finally, finally. But the thing is, when you say finally and you, you can take a breath, you stop and you think, joy. I feel happy now. I feel good now. I feel relieved. But the moment when you got to stand back up and get back in the game, you know somebody's coming to contact you again. Come on, I'm talking to you this morning. No matter where you are in life, no matter what sport you may be in, no matter what, 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 what type of job you got, you're going to be contacted somehow. Somebody's going to contact you at times, not physically, but with, even with the words. Sticks and stones may make my, break my bones, but words may never hurt me. Let me tell you something, it hurts more with the words. The words are things that's probably going to last around in the lingering of your ear. It gets to your mental state. The mental state affects the whole physical. I hope I'm making sense this morning. But you got to maintain joy, gang. You're about to walk out of this room today, and I guarantee you're going to be tested with this thing about keeping the joy. Keeping the joy. And keeping the joy is very, it's very challenging, keeping joy. Because if, the number one thing that the enemy wants to do is if he knows, if he robs you of your joy, he knows he got you. Joy is, is one of the fruits of the Spirit. It's found in the book of Galatians too, about the fruits of the Spirit. Back in the islands, we're blessed with tropical weather. We got all types of fruits. Over here, I don't see much fruit. I may be seeing some yards and a few oranges or my Filipino's neighbor's yard with uh, calamansi. I want to just reach over the fence and grab some of his calamansi. We're in des that's, we, we have desert fruit. We have cactus fruit. <laughs> we, have, we have a lot of different fruits. You know what it says in Nehemiah 8, 10? In Nehemiah 8, 10 it says, joy cometh in the morning. I talked about that with y'all. But there's three keys. I got to get to these three keys. Three keys that I want to leave you with about maintaining joy. And it's found, the first one is found in verse number five. Verse number five said this, I am the true vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears what? Much fruit. There's a lot of fruit. So if you was back in Hawaii, how would you say much fruit? Choke fruit. Choke fruit, bro. Or they would say what? Plant. It's not plenty, it's plenty. Or choke fruit or plenty. And if you got choke fruit, that means that if you got a lot of fruit, you got fruit that you can bless other people with. And you can be blessed to be a blessing. It talks about it in Genesis chapter 12. It talks about, about how Abraham was blessed. He was the father of many nations, but God had blessed him. He said, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. And then I said, okay, if, if I'm a seed, it says this, that we are the seeds of Abraham. And whatever the blessing that was spoken to Abraham, that we can actually obtain those blessings too because we're a connection, we're a seed of him. 
And so because we're a seed, today I have seven children. I'm a father Abraham today. And I see my cousin Kuna, I think we tie now. We get two father Abrahams. And I see the rest of my cousins in here say, keep trying to be Abraham, keep going. I want to give up the title. Kuna, we tied, pass me. But there's so much fruit in the Lord. When you abide in him and he in us, there's much fruit. There's much blessing. You know how many people around me today that I go that I don't even know about them? But it's how I actually respond with them that actually uh, begins to open up each other. You get to talk. I met a friend for the first time on this week, Josh. I was so blessed to meet him. Sorry to put you on the spot, Josh. I'm glad you're here. But I got to meet him. And I found out later on from his daughter that this guy loves fishing too. And who's fisherman in the house? You all got to eat of the fruit that God blessed my boat with. Isn't it true? Come on, you guys know what I'm talking about. And at times, God would bless our boat. My boat was running at the time because that was a, it became a job at, back home, how God provided. But I never forgot to take back to our elders of our church, our kukunas of the church, or those that may not be able to go out there and go catch them. If God was to put them in my boat, I was going to catch them for them. An angel always would beg me, Pastor Jay, I miss your smoke marlin did. Over here, no more marlin. Over here, to get striped bass. <laughs> but when God puts fruits in your life, he puts them there because, number one, he sees that whatever he blesses you with, that you'd be a good steward of the blessing that he placed in your hands. And if he can see that you're, you're a good steward of what you got, how many of you agree that God would want to bless you with even more? A great good illustration is it says in his word, it says, if you be faithful with little, he makes you ruler over much. Be fruitful. Not just making kids fruitful, but be fruitful in at times keeping joy. Because joy is contagious. You can, you can hear about all these things that happened before in a few years about COVID. It says COVID is a very contagious thing. I want to tell you something. Joy is just the same. If people see me smiling when they're upset, they can't stop but somehow. <laughs> and I look at them, I just keep smiling. And one moment soon, next thing you know, it just goes up and then I see them smiling. It's contagious. If you're watching right now live by Facebook, joy is contagious. It's contagious, but it's a good contagious. It's just like salt added to some ribeye, some of you guys. And we use the pakai. We use the real salt, not all of these other pink salt up here. We use the real salt. My, the kids, I bring home these kids, at least seven or eight kids every day to my house. And when they come, they always ask me, Uncle, what are ocean salt? I said, that's salt too expensive. Use the Morton salt inside the cabinet. <laughs> but you know... We use the real salt at home. The salt that took time for going collect. We would collect them in seasons. We can't just collect them anytime. You can't just go collect the salt anytime. There's a season for it because there's a winter season. And in winter season, there's what? Big surf. Come on, all you islanders. You get big surf. But after the big surf, the ponds begin to get filled with the salt water. I always watched the ponds, which one everybody was hanging on with, because I ain't going back to that pond. Because there's going to become a dry season. The spring is going to come, things are going to start drying up. But then when summertime comes, I know whatever was filled from the big surf in the wintertime, when it comes summertime, when the heat comes on, I know what was placed there will eventually have something I'm going to want. And we call it the Hawaiian gold or the white gold. That's the type of salt I, I'm so blessed I have a brother back home that goes and collects this so often. It's just like you and I. The seasons that you're in, God's pouring out his water into your life. You might feel like you're drowning from what you're hearing this morning, what's been covering you, and you can't, you're having a hard time to receive me. You're having a hard time to keep your head above the water. I'm going to tell you something. There's a season where God's going to start drying it up, and you're going to start seeing what he's trying to tell you. 
that whatever the struggle that's been happening that you're receiving probably this morning with some kind of message, whatever you're facing in life, his word is the living water. His word is not just the living water. It says to taste and see that the Lord is good. It not only says that, he says that we are the salt and the light of this world. So you got to be a salt shaker sometime. You can't just be salty all your life. But you got to learn how to go in. What do you think they got the movie, I mean, the song called The Twist? Somebody had to be a salt shaker and encourage somebody. You know, this morning, I felt like I was being shaken salt on this morning. When I saw Jay walk inside, and then I saw Angel in the family, and I saw Kale walk inside, and I saw my nieces walk inside, and say, we're out again. Honestly, you're shaking salt on me. I told my auntie, I said, auntie, thank you for making time just to stop in. Because without you, you know, it just means a lot to me. I say that from my heart. Family, thank you. I know it costs a little bit more to come in this direction. You could have just went to see Mickey Mouse and Minnie. You would have just went right past us. This guy grateful. Because he's shaking salt. I might be shedding salt and shaking salt and sharing the word. But at times I need to have salt shaken on me too. And just your presence being here showed me how good God is. How faithful he is. How wonderful he is. To my Wahana, thank you for being here. But you guys messed up because Uncle Chucky never bring his crab. <laughs> I'm going to pick on Dr. Chucky this or next week when Bula comes, send some crab with him. <laughs> Thank you. You mean a lot to me. As well as to our families here. You don't know what you mean. Thank you. I didn't even start my, I started my first key. I think so. <laughs> Did I not share my first key? Okay, it was four. Okay, I'm sorry. I told you guys, give me 25 minutes. It's already 26 minutes. I'll move through it. The first key is found in verse 5, right? The first key was this, abide in Christ. How do you maintain your joy? You got to abide. What is abide? You got to reside. You got you to at times stop being so busy and just take a seat and just listen to what God is trying to say. Come on, gang. You know, my children at times, they get so busy too. And I got to tell them, you know what? Sit down. Sit down. I love to... I love to sit down and, and eat meals with my family on the table. Not just in the, we call it in the parlor. You know what I'm talking about. I, I, I like to sit down in the parlor in the living room and just to have meals, but there's no other meal that I enjoy the most than sitting on the table with my family. Because when I sit on my table with my family, my family can communicate. They tell me about their day, I tell them about my day, and that little did I realize they're encouraging me from some of the things I went through all the day. And then I'm encouraging them. But that's what the family does. The, the scripture says in Psalm, it says he prepares the table in the midst of our enemies. He prepares the table for you and your family in the midst of transition or, or turmoil or challenge. He still can prepare the table. What's the table prepared for? Not just for meals. But you got to be careful who you allow to sit at your tables. Because if you're abiding in him, at times he's going to tell you, you got to not invite that to your table right now. It's something that you know is going to pull some joy out of you. You can't invite that to your table to sit down at your table because the moment you allow that to sit down at your table, at a meal setting, people get to speak into your life. Be careful. You got to abide. Somebody say the word abide. It says that the first one was abide in Christ. It says in Psalm 16 verse 11, in your presence is fullness of joy. I love it. In his presence, there's fullness of joy. It didn't say in his presence, there's half joy. It didn't say in his presence, there's little bit joy. It says fullness. Anything that is full is above the lip or above the rim and overflowing. It's full. I just got a bump on it. It's going to spill over. It's full. How many of you want blessing in your life that something just nudges you? Blessing starts to run off on your children. Blessing starts to run off on your spouse. But because you're so full, you're full with joy, you're full with blessing, that anything that comes into contact with you, it starts to spill on them. 
that's the kind of blessing I want to have. You know, finances is really good, but favor is far greater. <laughs> favor is so great that actually things that is actually God sends favor, money cannot buy favor. 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 Somebody say favor. Say it again. Say favor. The second key is this. The second key about abiding or maintaining the joy is this. Found in verse number seven. Verse seven says this. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask whatever you desire and it shall be done. There's a huge key. If you need, if you have a desire, you have a want, you have something you've been asking God for. The whole thing is, is it says it gives you the key. If you abide in me, what is abide in me, Pastor Jay? Sometimes you got to stop giving up the way you usually go about doing things. The things that you know about how to do it. How you went about to do it. The friends you know can help you. I had some friends I know who pulled me out of some stuff that I didn't have to go and ask God for. But guess what? All the things that they helped me from or, or through, it was only temporary. It was a temporary fix. Like at times medication is like a temporary fix that you're going to need the medication all over again. But with God, he told this he told the woman at the well, he told the woman, he told her to go and he, he was shooting his thirsty. And, and, and this woman was a Samaritan at the well. He told her to give him, to give him, I'm sorry, I'm starting to speak pigeon. He told the woman to give him a drink because he was thirsty. And then he began to speak on the woman of what type of life she was from. And then the woman actually said this after he says, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Jesus probably looked at her and he probably just smiled. He says, woman, he said this, woman, if you only knew who you'd be talking to, the water that you're giving me is different from the water I can give you. Because the water I can give you is everlasting life. With man, things will be temporary. With God, things end up eternal. Because he's the blueprint of everything. Amen. So the second key that I left with you is number seven. It says it's the second key was abide in his word. Abide in his word. You know, the word is this. I remember learning this when I was in Bible college way back when. But the word of God is this thing called logos and rhema. Logos and rhema. Logos is the written word. What is logos? Written word. Anything that's written here. It says it also in the book of Timothy that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's written word. But rhema is this. When you read the word or you hear the word, the word starts to jump out in you and he say, oh, that's what it's trying to say. And you get a re revelation or you get, a, you, get, you get ministered to and then you get what God was trying to speak to you. You see, he can show me John 3.16 to me and how I receive it or what I think it should be saying. But he can show you John 3.16 and he'll show you something different. That's amazing. Anybody ever did read a scripture or heard a scripture that you've never heard it that way that somebody ever ministered? That's a rainbow. God has given inspiration of the written word of what he's trying to speak to you. His word will never change, delete, or change for anybody. His word remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. He'll never change. So if he will never change, why we got to change? Why we got to change giving up on joy? Why we got to change giving up on peace? We don't have to change because God is always faithful. Amen. Even when you messed up, he was still there. Amen. Last key, last key, because I'm kind of taking up two CVs right now. <laughs> the last key is this. I found in verse 10. It says this. In fact, what's the first key? Anybody can tell me what the first key? Abide in Christ. What's the second key? key? Abide in his word. Abide in Christ. Abide in his word. And the third key is this. It's found in verse 10. Verse 10 says this. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, what I've been speaking to you, what I've been telling you, what I've been giving Moses way back then. If you abide in my commandments, what is his commandments? Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not lie. You got so much of these commandments. But if you keep the commandments, you keep the truth. Some of us may not know all the Ten Commandments. But one of the commandments is this, you shall love your brother or your sister. You know, it's hard, hard. It's so hard to, to love somebody who said all kinds of things against you or might have hurt you. One thing is this, hurting people is going to hurt others. Whether you like it or not, when people hurt, they hurt others. 
but you still can love on people even when you're hurting. But you got to give it to Jesus. You got to give him your cares. You got to give him your hurts. You got to give him your fears. Because fear is not of God in the first place. My father, Apostle Jay, my spiritual daddy would always say this. Jiboy. Okay, don't call me Jiboy now, okay? Only my dad and my family can call me Jiboy. Kind of run in the direction of your fear. Are you crazy? You got to run in the direction of your fear. Why do I have to run in the direction of whatever tries to bring fear to me? Because this is what my father said. If you, if you don't run in the direction of your fears, whatever has been making you afraid is going to keep chasing you. But if you turn around and you stop and you say, I'm not afraid of you. I'm coming at you, crossing the line. There's no line no more. Not, everybody always say, devil, you stay on your side of the line. I'll tell you something, there's not a square dance with him anymore. He want to dance with you, you can't dance with him. Because if you start to dance with him, he's going to lead you into a dance that you're not going to want to be in. But you got to remember to stand. It says this in verse 10. Keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. And just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. The third one is this, abide in his love and keep in his commandments. Abide in his love. The first one was... Abide in Christ. The second one was abide in his word. The last one is abide in his love. Abide in Christ. Say it with me. Abide in Christ. Abide in, Christ. Abide in his word. Abide in his, abide in his love. Abide in his, love. his love is what gave the commandments. His love is what gave the commandments when he led the people of Israel out of Egypt. It was because of all their murmuring and complaining. Moses, you should have left us back there, man. We was eating. Moses, you know how cold it is out here? What did God do? God provided a fire. Moses, man, you should have left us alone. Out here it's so cold. It's so hot. God provided cloud by day. Moses, we so hungry, bro. At least back over there, we had something to eat. What God do? He sent six-foot quail. I wish we had a six-foot turkey right now. I could share with everybody. They, step, they still kept complaining. What did God do? He allowed this thing to fall from heaven called manna. God is providing everybody without you realizing, even it might seem a little bit tough, He's still going to provide. Can I, can I say that again? When it's tough, if you learn to keep joy, God is still providing. One of the greatest stories that if you don't know me by now, was a time it came this time of the season. This time of the season. <laughs> I got injured on my job. This time of the season, where we're stuck now in this time of the season. Where God actually showed me how good he was. All the way until my children, I only had Bambula, Jaira, that time, three. Now, whew, that was way back. Bambula, Jaira. But I would never go back to go and ask my father for help or my family for help. Because now it was my turn to put the God that I've heard about to the test with me. He said, you said you were faithful. I'm going to be faithful too. When you said you're going to, make, you're going to be my provider, I may not have provision to bring offering at the church. But my offering... I want to serve to you in my worship what I do. It's the honest truth. My family was eating a bag of rice. Nothing in the cabinet. Nothing in the ice box. We never ran to man, but we trusted God. Yeah. When you had a bag of rice. Come on now, you're living in Hawaii. I see this happen when we built the orphanage you are connected to in the Philippines. But we have our own rice patties that the kids help to take care of because it sustains our orphanage there. Now my dad always told me this. What you make happen for others, God's going to make happen for you. But people don't know what you're going through. You can be singing on the praise team every single Sunday, Wednesday service, show up to Monday night practice. They didn't even know that I was going through a storm when my family was eating rice and show you. It's the honest truth. Maybe that's how Bam got his size from rice. <laughs> and maybe that's what my daughter loves show you. 
That's all we had. I'm not ashamed. I'll be transparent with you. I know what it's like to have a hard time. Just as much as you. But joy had to remain in my life. Lord, even if I may not have what I see other people having or at the moment right now, it might be tough. I sold my truck. I sold my van. I sold my motorcycle. I sold everything I had. Because whatever I had didn't matter. Because all that mattered was keeping my family together. And you know, sometimes you got to fight like hell to keep your family together. Or you got to fight out all the hellish things to keep your family together. And it's tough. Life is tough. Life not easy. But you got to maintain joy in order to make it through in every single day. If you can't maintain joy, the devil's going to rob you of every single thing. Got to maintain joy. How do you maintain joy? Every day I got to try and work it. I got to work it when people don't want to say how I really am. I got to work it even if I don't feel like getting up and doing what I got to do. I got to keep joy. I got to keep joy. I walk inside of this building, inside of here. I see mess all over the place. Keep joy. Keep joy. Keep joy. Keep joy. Oh, damn it. Keep joy. <laughs> Be real with you. Going out there, all the people can see the trash blowing over here. Somebody stop and grab that paper. And it's all flying stuck on the fence. Guess what I'm doing also? Keep joy. Damn it. Keep joy. I gotta speak to myself. I gotta speak to myself. If you fall apart, your family fall apart, your family fall apart, the devil's gonna rob you of everything else. Keep it together, man. In fact, you should encourage somebody to say, hey, keep it together. Yeah, come on, you gotta tell somebody next to you, come on, bro, keep it together. Keep it together. My family that came from back home in Hawaii. I'm so blessed you're here, but not just that. God made a way for you to be here. Yeah. It was an extra spending to be here. And then tomorrow, you're going to see Mickey. <laughs> Shoot, I want to drop everything and say, because make room in that van. I come in too. In fact, hook up the Harley Davidson trailer our church get. My family will fit in the trailer. We're going. We're going to look like we just crossed over someplace. Keep the joy. Keep the joy. Keep joy. If anything you can remember today, Jesus loves you. But you got to keep the joy. You got to keep the joy. Got to keep the joy. First key was abide what? Abide in Christ. Second key, abide in what? Abide in the word. The last one was what? Abide in his love. If you just look at it, Christ, Word, Love. You put the three together. That's Christ all in one. Hey, friends, family, Jesus Christ loves you. He loves you that he gave his, not just gave his son. He loves you so much that whatever you're facing in life, he'll never leave. Neither forsake. He's going to make a way. It might be tough right now. He's going to make a way. You got to keep trusting. Got to keep trusting. The word trust, tomorrow's results ultimately starts today. The word trust, T-R-U-S-T, tomorrow's result. Whatever happens tomorrow is a result of what you start today. Amen. If you've never trusted, you've never abided in him, you've never kept the word, you've never kept his love, you got to start today. So the result of what you start today is going to start to show up tomorrow. And I keep working, I keep working it. I get better, it starts to get clearer. But the next time you come to service, you be telling other people, put your hands up in the air. Because Jesus is good. Come on, give him a good clap. Give him a good clap. <laughs> Before we end this service, I know I went too long. But I got to do this. I really want to invite my family. I really want to invite my family to come and just share a, maybe five songs. <laughs> Because you know going to get on Hana Hole no matter what. But this is just a portion of my family. If you only understand, this might be a lot of them now. But it's really a little amount. If our whole family was together, this building no more room over here. But my family, my Ohana, if you could, would you bless us with a song? I bless you here this morning. Come, my Ohana, come. Thank you, Jesus, for your love to me.
of Safety Christian Fellowship. Remember, if you're giving your tithes and offering, you can visit us at aoshawaii.com or text the word GIVE to 1-808-518-3793. God bless.